So Allah is Ba'id. Allah is far, far removed from attributes or characteristics of His creation. Allah is far removed from any injustice. Ya ibadi inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. All my servants, Allah informs us in Hadith Qudsi, I've forbidden oppression for myself. So and I've made you be forbidden amongst you, do not oppress one another. Now an obvious question arises, especially in our day and time, when people are obsessed with themselves, that, well, how does, if Allah doesn't oppress, why does He let tsunamis wipe out people? That's a rahmah. That's a mercy. Because through the, the suffering, hardship, difficulty, or possibly the martyrdom of those people, they're all going to Jannah. They're on the fast track into Jannah. So they're just cruising in. We're out there in the lanes where all the backup is, waiting our turn, looking for change. And they're just... Shoo, shoo. And so people who are uh, asked those sort of questions forget the reality of our situation. This world is in our end. If this was the end, you could ask that question. But the end is Jannah. The end is paradise. And so if suffering in this world is our path to paradise, there's no justice, injustice in that. Because for our suffering, we're recompensed by Allah as shakur so, Allah is shukur man yu'ati tawaban jazilan ala amalin qaleeb. The one who gives a great reward for a little action. So, rel anything we suffer in this world relative to eternity and paradise is very small. So, if we didn't get that great reward, everything we suffer, the sticking of a thorn, leads to our sins being wiped out from us. So anything we suffer is an expiation of our sins and, and a cleansing. So we're just asked to be patient in the face of suffering. And, and not to be like people who don't believe in Allah, who question Allah in the face of suffering, or, or they just uh, curse who knows what because they don't even believe in God. And many more so it just becomes a constant complaint and a constant sense of victimization. Why me? Why me? Why me? Whereas the believer says, why not me? So Allah is far removed from any attributes or actions associated <clears throat> with the creation. Subhanalladi, alladi hu Allah. So glorified, exalted is the one. The one is Allah. Alladi hu Allah. Asra bi abdihi, who has carried his servant by night. Every isra occurs at night. So isra is the journey at night. So this Isra is sometimes called the, the night journey. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Subhanalladi Asra bi Abdihi Laylan. If every night journey, every Isra is at night, why mention Laylan? So the commentators, Imam Fakhruddin Razi and others mention that this is to emphasize Allah's power that he took his Prophet ﷺ in a small part of the night. Asra bi abdihi laylan. He took his Prophet in a small part of the night. And it's related that when the Prophet ﷺ left the house of Umhani, 
So the dominant opinion that uh, Masjid al-Haram from the sacred Masjid was directly from Mecca, or specifically from the house of his cousin Umhani, Bint Abi Talib. And when he left Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the door started swinging. So you know you go out and the hinge the door is swinging. When he came back, the door hadn't stopped swinging. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi laylan. So this is to emphasize the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're going to come back to this issue, inshallah. Asra bi abdihi with his servant. And so this goes back to what I was just mentioning about the believer and the orientation of the believer in relationship to, in, in, in his or her relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a relationship of servitude. And we are honored with servitude. Those who, who don't believe in Allah, they don't practice uh, this religion, or any religion for that matter, they've been denied the opportunity of, servi of servitude. But the believer has been honored with servitude. And the fact that we're honored is uh, associated with, in this station, where the Prophet وسلم, was taken where no human being has ever gone in this world. And honored with that station to be brought into the divine presence, he's taken there under the description of his slavehood, his servitude. Subhanallah, Esra, Allah didn't say Esra bi nabiyihi, Esra bi rasulihi, Esra bi habibihi. His beloved, his prophet, his messenger, Esra bi Abdihi. Because the actualization of our servitude before our Lord is the highest station a human being can attain to. And so the, the, the ulama, they describe this, this as tahqiq al ubudiya, actualizing our servant, servantship to our Lord. Tahqiq al ubudiyah And so we're living in a time where it's Tahqiq al hurriyah Actualizing our freedom from our Lord. For we determine what's haram or halal. This can't be haram because I like it. MashaAllah. That's a wonderful standard for establishing Allah. There's like 9 billion people. We could have 9 billion rulings on one issue, potentially. Asra bi abdihi. Alhamdulillah, hilladhi anzala ala abdihi al kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. All praises due to Allah who has revealed the scripture to his slave servant. So the final revelation to come to a human being that came to Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessing of Almighty uh, uh, Allah upon him is mentioned in the context of his servitude. Because the, to the extent that we actualize our servitude to Allah, then we actualize the lordship of Allah. It's an inverse relationship. As our servitude humbles us, our reverence for our Lord is elevated. And as our rejection of our servitude is elevated, our magnification of our Lord is deflated. Until for those who have no share of servitude whatsoever, atheists, there is no Allah. There is no God. Because why? There is no servitude and there's no slavehood within them. So we could literally translate that literally, 
abada abd. I have not created the jinn nor the humans except to be my slave servants. Not to each other, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And <laughs> I, w I have to say this because even though the people that are um, tweeting out right now, they might make a big tweet controversy. But this is part of our deen. One of the reasons, well, I won't say it, you can ask me privately. People aren't ready for it. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. So, Asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram from Mecca, from the immediate environments of the sacred masjid, but specifically from the house of Umm Ali bint Abi Talib. <clears throat> Allahumma salli ala ila al masjid al aqsa to the furthest mosque. So the furthest masjid in Quds, in Jerusalem, Masjid Al-Aqsa, and it's called Aqsa furthest because of the great, great distance between that masjid and Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. So and then Allah says, الَّذِي بَرَكْنَا حَوْلَ الَّذِي بَرَكْنَا so whose precincts we have blessed. Precincts meaning Bilad sham <coughs> or the Levant, what we call today the Levant. Palestine, Sham, Dubnan. So that whole area has been blessed. It's been blessed with natural beauty. So what what's at the very heart of it? You look at Philistine to the south, Lebanon to the north, Sham to the to the east. At the heart of it is a mountain they call Jabal al Sheikh. It's a beautiful snow capped mountain that irrigates the entire area. All of these lands, you can see Jabal al-Sheikh. Jabal al-Sheikh, because he has white hair, snow-capped. La ilaha illallah. This land, and it's blessed because it's the land from which so many prophets emerged. May Allah preserve it, and may Allah return it to, to, to its sanctity. It's been blessed historically. So many great scholars have emerged from that area. <laughs> to show him some of our signs. And so this the, the Prophet وسلم, during this journey was shown signs of Allah's Qudra. And again, people weren't ready, they weren't prepared for those signs. The sign that he could he could go from Mecca to Jerusalem, ascend through the heavens, return in the time it would that the door didn't stop swinging. He witnessed that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was ready for that. Abu Bakr was ready for that. But a lot of the believers won, and, and, we're, we're, and they apostated. And we'll return to that issue in, in conclusion. Because the, the, the hypocrites and the kuffar, the mushrikeen, the idolaters, they were ridiculing the Muslim. Now look what he's saying. Now look what he's saying. He said he went to from here to Jerusalem, ascended through the heavens, and came back. 
during the same night. The Prophet, La he was he was ready and he found great consolation in that. After the hardship, after the death of Abu Talib, after the death of Khadija, radiallahu anha, after the humiliation at Ta'if, after all he suffered, after the boycott, the blockade, this was a consolation for him to let him know Allah is in control. And Allah will not forsake you. So this was, so he was ready. Abu Bakr was ready. If he said it, I believe it. This, he became Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the one who testifies to the truth. Siddiq, he said it, I believe it, because he's he said that more a more miraculous occurrence, the descent of revelation, is more miraculous than this. He said it, I believe it. But there were believers who won. They left, they left their faith, but they came back. Because the Prophet وسلم, he gave proof. He said, there's a caravan coming. Here's the description of the caravan. And when they saw the caravan, they returned to their faith. And we don't know their names. This is how our scholars honor this, the sanctity of the believer, that they wouldn't associate them with apostasy and, and defile their names and their reputations because they return to faith. So this is, this is one of the lessons we can take from, from these occurrences. So to show them some of our signs. Now, Show some of our signs, some of the uh, ulama raise a theological question here. And that question is, why would not what Ibrahim was shown, alayhi salam, wa kalalika nuri Ibrahim malakuta samawati wal ard. And we have shown, thus have we shown Ibrahim, Abraham, the unseen deeper realms of the heavens and the earth whereas the prophet min is to part part portion off so some of our signs ibrahim was shown the unseen dominions and the deeper underlying meanings in the heavens and the earth, the Malakut, Al Mulghayb, Wal Ma'ani, the unseen realm, the realm of meanings behind this physical manifestation of things, the Mulk. So the, the ulama say, no, the Prophet, وسلم, what he was shown was greater because he was shown something of the Jabarut. Jabarut in the, with Abi Talib al Makki, who are Alam al Adama, Yani Alam al Sifati, al Asma wa Sifat al Ilahiya. So he was shown something of the divine realm, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was brought into the divine presence. So as they say, the, 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 the Malakut is the deeper meaning of the mulk. The mulk, the world of manifest things. The malakut, the world of seen, unseen reality. And the meanings of those manifest things. But the jabarut, the light from which those meanings emerge. And so the Prophet was shown something greater than what Ibrahim was shown because what he was shown was directly associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas what Ibrahim was shown was directly associated with the creation of Allah 
تعالى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد إنه سميع البصير Verily he is the hearing, the seeing. Uh, so one of the commentators said, As-sami'u bi'aqwali Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one who hears the speech and the, the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so this is of significance to us. We mentioned this this morning, in fact, to a group of students that our following of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa ittiba'una li sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qawlan wa fi'lan wa halan we follow him in his speech so we try to adorn ourselves with prophetic speech we don't talk like everyone out there. We don't talk like people in the street unless we're talking to them. The Prophet Sallallahu he would speak to people at, at their level. The, uh, the Arabi came and dressed them one way, he responded accordingly. The Himyari came from a, a tribe of Himyar who used Alif Mi as opposed to Alif Lam. They don't say Al Kitab, they say Am Kitab. So one of them asked the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hel minam birrim siyam fim safar. Is it righteousness to fast while you're traveling? Hel minam birham min al bir. Hel minam bir. As siyam, am siyam. Fis safar, fim safar. فأجابه صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس من أمبير مسيام في مسافر. It's not righteousness that you fast while you're traveling. So he knew all of the tongues, but in our speech with each other, in our speech with our family members, we try to elevate each other by emulating the dignified, prophetically defined. Divinely oriented speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So not just his actions, but his speech. And it, it we should cringe. We hear a Muslim just profanity. Well, everyone uses these words. They're not profane anymore. That's what you think. They're not profane anymore because our standards have been lowered so low by shaitan. When, when television, some of you are old enough to remember when television first came out. I'm not going to point to anybody. You know who you are. If, if someone said a four-letter word, people would go and protest at the, at the, at the television station. When, when, when a woman wore slacks, people were, were protesting. I think it was Mary Tyler Moore, the first female to wear pants on television. People were protesting. They're up then, gradually, not just slacks, the they slacks got shorter and shorter. And the language got more foul and more foul and more foul. Until now, television, you know, it's anything goes. Anything, literally. But it didn't start out that way. The bar was lowered, the bar was lowered, the bar was lowered, the bar was lowered, the bar was lowered. And we all got used to jumping over the low bar. But as Muslims, we should keep the bar high. And just make sure our legs are strong so we can jump over it. We strengthen our legs with our salah and our zakah and our prayer and our night prayer and our Quran, our rod, al-qar. So we jump over the high bar and don't lower the love, don't lower the bar and then uh, be proud of our weak legs. Look, I can high jump six inches. Mashallah. You should try out for the Olympics. 
No, I got high jump six foot five, six foot six. Masha Allah, you must have some strong legs. Islam wants us to have strong legs, not a low bar. So don't lower the bar. Strengthen your legs. So kaulan wa fi'lan wa halan. We should try to begin to approximate the prophetic states. We should begin. My sister, alhamdulillah, is great. Sister, you have a PhD. That's wonderful. That's not haram. It's not blameworthy. But some sisters should be striving to be like Rabia or Nafisa. We talked about this a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. You know, should be striving for the spiritual heights as much as our sisters strive for the professional heights. Again, nothing wrong with that. Sisters, don't get mad at me. I'm not trying to insinuate anything. I'm just saying. We should, shouldn't, shouldn't, right? Spiritual heights. Arifatul Khair. Arifatul Khair. She was a woman in uh, Andalusia who memorized the Ashur Kira'at and taught them in her house behind a veil. At one time, there were 5,000 women in Andalusia at one time that had memorized Sahir Bukhari. And that's when Andalusia was strong. So we should have brothers and sisters trying to memorize Al-Bukhari, Siha Sitta. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. My, my wife's teacher in Damascus, his sister memorized Seha Sitta, Quran, had a degree from Abi Nur and Jamit Dimash and Mahad al Fat. <laughs> MashaAllah. It's too old for you. <laughs> his eyes are lighting up. Oh, really? I mean, but just but Allah Akbar striving in their deen. La ilaha illallah. So to show him some of our signs, where he is, the hearing, the seeing. So we mentioned, and and then he said, okay, Samir, Samir bi aqwali Muhammadin. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Basiru bi af'alihi khalisatan an shawa'ib al-riyah maqroonatan bi-sidqi wa sifat. And he sees his actions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, purified from any uh, corrupting uh, dissimulation showing off and joined with honesty and purity. Runatan the Sadqi was So we should we should be striving to be people of honesty. In the Sadqa Yahdi il al Bir wa in al Birra Yahdi il al Jannah. Honesty leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to Jannah. Was Safa. We should strive, we should be striving to be people of purity. Which means the impurities of the world that we bring into our heart via our eyes. Things like pornography and all this thing via our ears. Corrupting music. I, I, when I came back from Syria, this was like the early 2000s. I, I was like, almost went crazy. Uh, unfortunately, I took it out on some people. But most of the young people in the masjid, they listen to 50 Cent. I'm like, what's 50 Cent? These are Muslim kids. And so a lot of you listen to 50 Cent, so you know what he was saying. Don't pretend otherwise. I'm like, these are Muslim kids listening to this stuff. I, I, I really, I, I like, I was going crazy. 
So when I left, there was no 50 cent. There wasn't even a dime. There wasn't 10 cent. And like within six or seven years, went from no dime to 50 cent. No, think about it. Where's the where's the uh, sofat? Where's the purity? When that's what's coming into our hearts. So some fawaid. We took a different approach of going through the hadith and the prophet saw this and the prophet saw that. You all know that. Not, I think we did that last time. You could look it up online. But what are some fawaid we can take from this? Number one, the Mi'raj is, is one the foundational event in the Sirah for Muslim spirituality. Because this is the event where the Prophet was brought into the Divine Presence. presence the Hadrat al-Ilahiyya. And the aspiration of every spiritual seeker, seeker is to enter into the Divine Presence. And so we know it's possible because it was attained by our Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu is the most excellent example for us. One of the things that did happen during the Mi'raj, uh, the Ascension, the prayers were made obligatory, five prayers, originally 50, but Allah is merciful. Imagine 50 prayers, like Fajr, and then post-Fajr, and then post-Fajr, Fajr, and pre-Duha, post-Duha, and they're all obligatory. He gave us five and then gave the, multiply it each by 10, and we get the the reward of the 50, but we only do the five. But the greater point here is there is a, there's a saying. Some says hadith, but and the, the ulama question that. But it's a saying that has circulated amongst the ulama, and so we give weight to it because they, they don't speak just idly. As-salatu mi'rajul mu'min. The salah is the mi'raj of the believer. The salah is the ascension of the believer. In other words, there is no spiritual elevation for a believer without salah. So people, they don't pray and they're sitting around, they're smoking hashish and they're reading Ibn Arabi in English translation. And Rumi, there's no spirit, that's just entertain, that's spiritual tourism. Well, a tourist, right, you go somewhere and then you come home. You don't stay. So you, you're just getting these feelings and then you go back to whatever you're doing. You don't stay. The journey is based on salah. Salatu mi'rajul mu'min. And without that foundation, nothing else is of any benefit. Without that foundation of the salah, nothing else is of benefit in terms of spiritual ascension. So this is one benefit that we take. And so as we said, probably the most significant uh, legislative uh, event of that ascension is the legislation of the five daily prayers. The second that is that the qudra or the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't uh, limited and confined to what we consider to be intelligible. So the power of Allah transcends human reason. There, there are things, when, when they got the, the satellite photographs of Saturn, they saw some of the rings were braided. They have no, no explanation. Physicists can't explain it. There are inexplicable things in this, this creation physically. 
they're physically inexplicable. And so at a deeper level, there are realities that transcend our human reason. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَعَلُّ لِمَا يُرِيد Does what He desires. And we can't do what we desire. Some people think they can. But they'll come to know. So the the so Allah's ability to take his prophet on this journey isn't deemed impossible because rationally we can't comprehend it. How could that happen like that? When Allah desires something, he but but says, be and it is. Kun the end it is. And so it's not confined to what we consider to be rational and reasonable. Now there are rational proofs in our religion, but ultimately there are realities that transcend our intellect. And this event was one of them, and this event affirms it. Uh, the third is that the spiritual elevation built on the salah, that's what we undertake. But ultimately, the gift of reaching our destination is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, subhanallah the asra bi abdihi laylan. He took his slave servant on this journey by night. من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا من حوله باركنا حوله حوله من حولي حو باركنا حوله باركنا حوله We took our servant on this journey. We blessed these precincts. We showed him some of our signs. لنوريه من آياتنا so this is all from Allah. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we do is necessary, but it is not, you guys are supposed to say, sufficient. The salah is necessary. The dhikr is necessary. The suhbah, keeping company of righteous people, is necessary. Controlling what we see, what we hear. Our tongues is necessary, but sufficiency is provided by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet, so why does Fakhruddin al-Razi mention Allah hears his speech and the excellent speech and Allah knows his pure and sincere actions, so he, he rewarded him with this gift of ascension. And so we strive to purify ourselves and we strive to be honest and we strive to be sincere and we pray Allah rewards us with the gift of ascension. But we have to do the work. But the work is not sufficient. It's necessary, but not sufficient. So that's what we do. Those who struggle and strive for our sake, who guides through the path, we will guide them to our paths, the paths leading to us. And so the striving is necessary, but the sufficiency in terms of the hidayah is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which linguistically makes sense because hidayah and hadiyah, the guidance and the gift are from the same root. <laughs> Mashallah. I understand there's a couple people that took shahada. And the shahada, folks, raise your hand, the new Muslims. Where you at, new Muslim? Assalamu alaikum, my brother. Hey, I, I, I know the feeling, man. I, I converted also. And you right, you made the right move. This uh, this religion is amazing. I'm telling you, it, it never ceases to amaze. That and but it's a marathon too. It's not a sprint. It's like ten seconds. It's over. 
like along and you every single foot of the 26 miles is amazing. Allahu Akbar. So it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fourth fa'ida uh, benefit Philistine is a blessed land. Masjid al-Aqsa in Philistine is a blessed land. And Allah is going to protect that land from those who through their greed, through their arrogance, through their enmity, are defiling that land. Allah is going to bless that land. Allah has already blessed it. And Allah is going to purify it of all defilement. Just as he blessed Allah Barakna Barakna Hawla, whose precincts we are blessed. Imagine Allah. And we mentioned the Murtad, the the Ulama Al 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 Kulun Muslimi Al Al Muslimi Haram Damuhu Amalhu Ibu. Every believer has a sanctity associated with himself or herself. In other words, an inviolable nature that cannot be transgressed against their life, their property, their honor. And so to protect the honor of those people who apostated, when they returned back to Islam, the ulama didn't mention their names. So their honor wouldn't be lessened by even a temporary association with disbelief. So that's that's a very serious lesson for us, because we jump to defile uh, the honor of believers. I I saw there must be a website out there like MuslimDefilement.com. Find a Muslim defile their honor. It's easy to do online. Just let your fingers get get loose in the anonymity of your closet, in your closet with your laptop, just going for it. You know, every chat room, they give you two dirhams about why this or that person who gave their life trying to serve this community is a scoundrel. Just, yeah. La ilaha illallah. So those those are some benefits. Uh, we'll stop here. Uh, what time is it? Fifteen minutes. Okay, so let's uh, we have some discussion, question and answers. But we just pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blesses us to realize the the magnitude of these events that we commemorate. That these are major. There, there's a physical history, so a, a secular historian only considers a, histor a historical event as something that can be substantiated by physical artifacts, something written down, so they look for carvings and bowls and things they can examine, physical artifacts, so look for the ruins of the city, talk about this ancient city so they go and dig and they look for the ruins of, of the city so they can verify indeed this happened uh, but there's also a spiritual history for humanity and that's the journey of the human spirit through time once it's created and these are milestones in our spiritual history Am I not your Lord when the, the uh, spirits were extracted from the loin of Adam in the pre-temporal realm? So before chronology became relevant in creation and there are asked Am I not your Lord? And they testify certainly. So that no one on the day of judgment can plead ignorance. 
These are spiritual milestones. The creation of Adam, Hawat, Adam and Eve, and the journey of their progeny from there. And then the advent of the prophets, the emergence of Musa alayhi salam, Noah Nuh alayhi salam, and the flood, and the emergence of the Bani Israel from Egypt. Advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the miraj, the night journey, the hijra that occurred shortly thereafter. These are all spiritual milestones, and our being here is part of that spiritual history, because there's a deeper meaning. It's not just we are physical beings in this physical place called America, doing physical things going to work and punching the clock and making whatever we make and hitting the keyboard. Those are all physical events. But there's a spiritual reality associated with us being here. And in, in that sense, this masjid could, well, there's some closer to the Pacific Ocean, Masjid Al-Aqsa, the furthest mountain. That in the furthest part, California, this is it. Once you get to Hawaii, you face west for Kibla. This is the furthest point we're facing east. Because South America, all of it is east of us. Chile, Peru, and the whole west coast of South America is east of us. So we're the last community that's facing east for Kibla. Northeast, whatever east, but east, southeast, you can choose your east. <laughs> but this is the last community. You get to Hawaii, New Zealand, Australia, they're all Fiji, they face west. So we're the furthest. There's a spiritual significance in that. That as far west as you could go, there are major Muslim communities now. That's not in vain or in jest. So any questions, comments? Ahlan wa sallam. Marhaban. Bismillah. Tawakkal ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Yes, sir. Explain what? The 
both of the nur, the lights are the same. There's one light, not two. Yeah, I know. It was one, not two. Huh? What? Allah. Read what? Did, did, only in the sense the Prophet reflected it, so it said. The, the, only in the sense the Prophet, that's what we say, Tal al Bedra The Bedr is the most perfect reflection of the light of the sun. But the moon has no light in and of itself. So the Prophet is the most perfect human reflection of the light of Allah. He has his own nur, but in that that station, he's the light of Allah is reflected in the most perfect form that a human being could reflect it. So in that sense, the light is the same. It's all the light of Allah directly and reflected. Wallahu al. Allah knows best. Yes, sir. He gave him a raise too. Salatu mi'rajul mu'min. So prayer is the ascension of the believer. And he said there's no spiritual progress without the prayer. So yeah. Amongst other things, he also ayatina to show him of our signs and to show him his power to let him know that you're not helpless at the mercy of these people that are forcing you out of your home, blockaded you in this valley outside of Mecca, led to the death of some of your most beloved companions, got, you were stoned at Ta'if, the tribes you're appealing to turned you away. Despite all of that, I am the all-powerful, and I got your back. And so it was to assure him. And in the context of that, the prayer was emphasized for sure. But to let him know that, listen, this is, you see this? This is what's going to happen to those people rejecting you. See these people suffering over there and over there and over there. So it was to console the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after all the losses, hardships, struggle, 
that he had experienced that everything's going to be all right. Yes. There's nothing directly related from, from the Prophet Wasallam. And so, as I said, it's, it's a night and it's a, it's, it's a night in the sacred month of Rajab. And so the things one should ordinarily do, ordinarily do, but probably maybe does not do, to take extra attention to do them on this night. But there's nothing specific. Uh, also, for example, the uh, Salatul Ragaib uh, between Maghrib and Isha on the first Juma of Rajab. Uh, Imam Nawawi and many others considered that to be one of the most reprehensible bid'ahs that a believer could engage in. So, a lot of things that are associated, do this, do that, they have no origin in the Sunnah of the Prophet. But as a night, and we're supposed to do tahajjud, and we're supposed to read Quran at night, and we're supposed so all the things we're encouraged to do anyway, it's good to like make sure we do those things, inshallah. So it's time to pray. I don't, the last time I was late for Isha, I almost got beat up. <laughs> yes. Uh, can huh? All right, uh, everyone, can you just wait ten seconds so we can make a prayer, inshallah? We we could discuss that privately. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Allah ma'alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman wa amman mutqabla. خالصا لوجهك الكريم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته